Describe securities issued by sovereign governments, non-sovereign governments, government agencies, and supranational entities. Okay, first we have sovereign bonds, bonds issued by national governments. These bonds are issued to meet the spending requirements of a national government when tax revenues are insufficient. In the US, they are called treasuries. In the UK, gilts. In Japan, JGBs. And in Germany, they are called bunds. One interesting point to note is that US treasuries have different names related to their term to maturity. For example, securities issued with a term to maturity of less than one year are called T-bills. Between one and 10 years, they're called T-notes. And beyond 10 years, they're called T-bonds. This practice of naming different maturities is not isolated to the US, and examples can be found elsewhere around the world. In terms of credit quality, it's important to remember that there is no collateral backing the bond. The bonds are backed by the ability of a government to collect tax revenue. Now, if tax revenues cover the spending needs of a government, i.e. they are running a budget surplus, then any additional funding will go towards principal and interest repayments. If not, and they are running a budget deficit, then debt is serviced by refinancing. Next, we need to consider the interest rate of a sovereign bond. There are two major types here, fixed and floating. Under fixed rate, we can have a coupon bond or a pure discount bond, otherwise known as a zero coupon bond. Coupon bonds pay some fixed payment each period and pay the principal at maturity. Zero coupon or pure discount bonds pay no periodic interest amount. They are bought at discount from face value and at maturity, the full face value is paid to the investor. Under floating rate, bonds are issued with rates that are linked either to a reference rate or to inflation, although it was more common that a bond would be linked to inflation than a reference rate for governments. There is one other term which we must mention here before moving on from sovereign bonds. An on-the-run security is the most recent issue of a particular maturity for a particular government. It is also referred to as a benchmark issue because it's considered a benchmark for other bonds with the same features from another issuer. Non-sovereign government bonds are issued by government entities below the national level. In the US, we would be looking at municipalities, who issue bonds called municipal bonds, or munis. In the UK, non-sovereign bonds are called local authority bonds. They are usually issued to finance a local project such as a hospital, school, a road, or a bridge. In terms of credit analysis, it's important to note that non-sovereign bonds are not necessarily guaranteed by the national government. Now, this may be the case, but it's not always the case. The credit quality of an issue depends mainly on the collateral or asset backing the bond, but it can also depend on a certain characteristic of the locality, i.e. their ability to generate local tax revenue, previous debt issues, and their historical rate of default, for example. In general, non-sovereign bonds are of high quality and have very low rates of default, but despite this, they usually have lower prices and higher yields than sovereign bonds of similar characteristics. Quasi-government bonds are also known as agency bonds. In the US, these bonds are issued by government-sponsored entities, or GSEs. Issuers would include the mortgage associations of Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. In Canada, they are called crown companies, BC Hydro, Hydro-Quebec, Canada Post, etc. In Germany, the railway network, Deutsche Bahn, is fully controlled by the German government. In the case of agency bonds, there is no tax revenue to support cash flows, and there is usually no government guarantee. It is the operations or a project under their control which determines their ability to repay. Finally, then, we have supranational bonds, and these bonds are issued by international entities like the World Bank and the International Monetary Fund, the IMF. Describe types of debt issued by corporations. The key difference between a corporation and a government is that corporations are in it for profit. The issuance of debt 
is born out of a need for funding as part of an overall capital structure which they then use to finance a hopefully profitable project. It is interesting to note at this time that only 30% of corporate borrowing comes from the capital markets and the rest of it actually comes from banks. So in terms of the ways in which a corporation can access debt funding, we have bank loans and syndicated loans, whereby either a bank or a group of lenders arrange some private terms with this company. Following that, we have commercial paper, an unsecured promissory note issued into the public market. This is particularly common in short-term funding, especially to support working capital or cash needs. When paper is issued to meet an immediate need until a permanent source of funding can be found, this is called bridge financing. When commercial paper matures, it is commonly rolled over by funding the principal payment with a new issuance. This is called rolling over the paper. One other major point to be aware of in this section is the difference in repayments between US and European bonds. In the US, commercial paper is issued, similar to treasuries, as pure discount instruments. Now what this means is that the bond is bought at a discount from face value. No interest is paid during the life of the bond and at maturity, the full face value is paid to the lender. In Europe, Bond rates are quoted as add-on yields, which means that a bond is purchased at face value and interest is earned during the life and then at maturity, the face value is returned. Lastly, then we must quickly mention corporate notes and bonds. This is simply a longer term financing instrument which a corporation can put in place. An instrument of between five and 10 years would be called medium term. Beyond 10 years, we're talking about long term. In the introductory video to the fixed income material, we discussed the various elements of fixed income securities. We spoke about the different kinds of maturity, coupons, payment structures, assets and collateral backing, and some contingency provisions. This all applies to corporate debt and should be in your mind when you think about the characteristics of corporate debt.